Hello, everybody. This is Christopher Mick, uh, better known to some of you as Space Guy from the Hudson Area Public Library. And we are doing another of our Women in STEAM interview series here on our YouTube channel at the library. So please like and subscribe if you've not already done that. And I'm very excited. A lot of you know I have a soft spot uh, for some of our guest speakers that have been past or current employees of NASA. And uh, we've got uh, a current employee of NASA to speak with us today. Uh, her name is Kate, and I'm going to throw it right over to her to do our introduction so we can get right into this. Kate, thank you so much for being with us. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm, my name is Kate, and I'm a mechanical and aerospace engineer. Um, right now I'm working at NASA's Johnson Space Center. So I work on our, um, uh, at our aircraft operations division in the engineering group. So what we do is we take care of um, our, I, I, primarily work on our Gulfstream aircraft. Um, and these are business jets that we've outfitted um, to do several missions. So one of the missions we fly is to go over to Kazakhstan or wherever the astronauts are landing from the space station. And um, we pick them up and bring them back to Houston. And then the other thing that those aircraft do primarily is airborne science. So one, um, one year we flew over, like for instance, to Antarctica and we were um, flying with a customer who, um, several customers who had payloads that were mapping how the ice sheets are changing over time. So um, yeah, we can collect all kinds of airborne science data like that. So that's primarily what I do. Yeah, you had, I think I told my son, you had the best excuse when we had to reschedule this interview before. And I said, that's the best excuse I've ever heard. And my son's like, what was it? I'm like, I think you said you were reconfiguring aircraft for the the crew return from the space station, and I'm like, I yeah. can go, I can go with that excuse. That's a very good. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm wearing uh, my Armstrong shirt because I know some of the planes you have are, are based out of Armstrong Flight Research Center, like the Gulfstream Three. Yeah, I actually we our group doesn't deal um, like directly deal with them, but we sometimes like um, partner with them to um do certain missions yeah well yeah. and one of yours was amazing uh, uh kate and i I'm, I'm we're friends on social media and it was really great mm -hmm. to follow along with you because uh i was really excited about your quarantine videos when you were in australia because <laughs> uh, we were all kind of trapped with covid 19 going on but but kate took it leave it to a nasa employee to take it one step further because you were like locked in a hotel you couldn't even leave your room correct no, we didn't have a key and we couldn't leave the room. There was actually yeah. security. The Australian um, government had security in the hallways. <laughs> so I, so I tell yeah. people, I'm like, you know, I could walk my dog and I could at least go outside. You were, you know, locked in that room. But it was great because for, for, I'll uh, put all of uh, Kate's social media links uh, in the video description so you can follow along with her on that. But she did these great posts of what you're getting dropped off for your daily meals. And uh, <laughs> it was, it was yeah, a lot I of fun to follow I tried to have fun with it to stay sane. So, <laughs> and you got a medal out of it too. I got an award. Um, we received the um, Silver Achievement Medal for that um, mission that we helped with. Yeah, that was very cool. Well, and and I love getting to talk to you because I, you do so much great STEM outreach work and with your blog and uh, uh, communicating with girls about you know getting into STEM careers. Could you just talk a little bit about, cause I'll share all those links so people can kind of follow along, but can you kind of talk about just that process of being somebody, you know, on this side of the fence from NASA and then going to having, you know, a career there, what that process was like? Yeah, um, I created basically my accounts to kind of show um, young girls uh, what opportunities are available to them with an engineering degree that you might not think about because, um, I didn't really, I knew I wanted to work in um, the space industry or at NASA one day, but I didn't know exactly how to get there. And I didn't know, I didn't see um, people who looked like me necessarily succeeding in these fields. So um, I just wanted to kind of build a community for young girls to see that there are people like them succeeding. Um, and so the way I ended up getting my dream job was I, well, I ended up going to a school that required um, a year of internships um, spread throughout my time in undergrad. Um, so I was like, oh, I guess this is a good opportunity to kind of reach out and see if there are any internships available at NASA. So I actually just searched like, um, I think like points of contact at uh, each NASA center to um, see who, what, like an actual person I could talk to that was in charge of the co-op or internship programs. 
And then I just um, shot each of them my email, or um, sorry, my resume, and said that I was really interested in working there and um, asked if they had any opportunities available. And I think that's a really good way to kind of set yourself apart and um, sometimes get your foot in the door because, you know, other people might just be applying through their online um, channels. And um, this is a good way to kind of highlight your passion. Yeah. Yeah. And can you, can you talk a little bit about, I know uh, some people have questions that I try to answer as best I can on the kind of collaborative nature of the work um, that it's it, a lot about, you know, team building and, and uh, teamwork, you know, between different groups and different departments. That's not just kind of uh, people working on their own. Yeah, sure. And I, I want to highlight that I don't speak beha on behalf of NASA at all. Oh, yeah. NASA. So just because I have to be careful because I'm uh, a government employee, I'm not speaking on behalf of NASA. These are all my opinions. But sure. um, but yes, from my experience, um, NASA is very team oriented. And I think in general, engineering is a really kind of a team effort um, because engineers are tasked with solving some of the world's toughest problems. And so it's a really takes a multidisciplinary team. So um, I know from my experience, NASA really valued, um, you know, they asked me types of, in my interview, they asked me a lot of questions about how I work in a team, kind of what my leadership traits were and that kind of thing, because um, like most of my projects are all team-based. So in one way or another, I'm working with other people. So yeah. they really want to make sure you're a team player. Yeah, well, definitely. And, and can you cite, do you have a story about like maybe a mentor in school, somebody that really kind of either inspired you or communicated to you, kind of helped you either, you know, grade school or middle school, high school, college, somebody that was kind of key in, in helping you get to where you are today? Yeah, um, I think I would, I would say my undergrad advisor um, was a really powerful um, role model for me because um, in engineering, there, even though there are um, obviously female professors, there are still, there's a, still a disparity between just like there's a lower percentage of women in engineering, mm -hmm. there's a lower percentage of um, female faculty in general in engineering and STEM fields. Um, so th the fact that I had a female um, undergraduate advisor was already awesome, but she really helped um, you know, build my self-confidence and was a good role model for me. And I still talk to her this, to this day and she's always believed in me and um, advocated for me. So she was a really great role model for me and still is. That's great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Cause when, you know, we've been doing everything remotely, obviously with zoom, cause I used to do a lot of on-site presentations at schools and, and we would uh, tie in some of the, the trips I've taken to NASA centers or some of the interviews and people I've gotten to talk to. And it's um, been harder for that with being on zoom. Cause you can't, you know, have those kind of sidebar conversations where kids would come up and ask you, you know, questions or talk to you, or you'd send them, you know, uh, you know, links and resources to their teacher to kind of share with them. So it's uh I'm glad we get at least to do, you know, these interviews to kind of provide a resource because the girls can just access these whenever it works for them. We were going to be having a lot of camps and things at the library, like a, a girls who code and, and a oh, girls awesome. uh, steam camp, but those have gotten, you know, kind of put on hold with uh, the COVID-19 protocols. We still can't do any in-person programs at the libraries, but we're hoping, uh, I think yeah. the, the current line is maybe the fall, we can get back to going to schools and having things back at the library. So uh, I really oh, I hope so. Yeah, because I, I mean, I actually I wrote a paper with my undergraduate advisor about, um, um, well, actually, it was about how co-ops and internships can help build self-efficacy, but we talked about other things, and it's so like self-confidence and your engineering abilities, mm -hmm. and um, help retain engineering students, and particularly women, and so we, we found that, like, um, things called contextual support, which is like, you know, um, we had a women in engineering group at my undergraduate institution and just different opportunities like that um, can really be a good way to retain um, minorities or just people in general, I guess, in, um, in these fields. So yeah, it's really great. Well, and, and I see it at, at a young age, you know, sometimes I'm speaking to third graders and I'll ask a question and they're all facing me, obviously at the front of the room, but I can see in the recognition that one of these girls knows the answer, her eyes light up. Oh. But I see that kind of the hand want to shoot up and then come back down that she doesn't want to be, you know, the first one or yeah. maybe she shouldn't answer. And and I always kind of wrestle with that because I'm like, I want them, you know, they know it and I want them to shoot their hand up and uh, and be comfortable with with uh, providing the answer. And, and you see that hesitation and stuff. And that's just always 
wanted me to kind of provide more opportunities for girls to feel either comfortable in a peer group of, yeah. you know, girls in a, in a STEM camp where it's all just, you know, girls being included and, uh, and making it easier that way or finding other ways to kind of facilitate their involvement. Yeah. And I, it's funny. One of my coworkers was just telling me the other day that his daughter was sitting next to him while he was looking at some video of an airplane and um, a pilot was like talking about stuff in the airplane. And she said, I want to be an engineer. And she goes, can girls do that? Uh, <laughs> and she's four and she's four years old. Yeah. <laughs> and he, but he said, he told her, of course you can. And yeah. so I was, I'm always glad to see, especially dads, um, really supportive of that type of thing, because I know the fact that I was always closer to my mom, but the fact that my dad was supportive of me in anything I wanted to do, especially related to STEM stuff, that um, really had a huge impact on me and in my decision to go into engineering, so. Yeah, no, it's great. And we need, you know, either teacher support or parent support or communities you know, organizations for doing that, like you said, your undergrad group and things like that. I yeah. Think, uh, uh, hopefully more of those things are coming online and, and just uh, able to provide kind of that glide scope for, for women that are interested in these careers to find more of an access point or, or community support for, uh, for going through that. Yeah. Well, and, I, and then another thing I thought you might be interested in, because um, again, we share these when we're in person, but this is a piece of uh, aircraft skin. This is the Gulfstream 2. Oh, it's not cool. the three like you're flying on, but the kids are interested to see, you know, like the thickness of yeah the airplane skin on it. So it's great to be able to pass those around because they just kind of so cool. in an abstract way don't really know how thick that is, you know, the airplane they're flying on if they're on like a commercial airliner. So we kind of talk about how it's it's pretty thin, you know, comparatively. Yeah. It's just the way you design it that gives it, you know, the strength or it's pressurized, or we get in the in fuel tanks on rockets and how we can <laughs> pressurize them to get the honeycomb strength and that. So uh yeah, I miss all the uh, practical things being in person, but hopefully, uh, as I said, soon we can end with uh, the endless Zoom things and get back to doing more in-person things. I wanted to ask you, yeah. because you've been so good about documenting your, your work, do you have anything you can talk about that's coming you know, on the horizon that you know you'll be working on in the, the next few months, or is it kind of just a week-to-week -week basis you're finding things out? Or um, Basically, I'm um, documenting, uh, well, so... I talk about how these airplanes fly airborne science. Well, one way we can collect data is um, our G5 has two big holes cut in the bottom of the airplane. And we install optical glass windows that are an inch and a half thick um, and they're fused silica glass. And the glass is, um, glass is a brittle material. So it behaves differently than metals do. So um, if you have like a scratch or a crack, um, it doesn't grow in a very predictable way. I mean, you can still um, estimate how much time is left before it's okay. going to fail, but it's harder to do that. Um, so we have to be very careful in how, and it's it's also just in general more fragile. So um, we have to, I, I utilize like fracture mechanics stuff that I learned in graduate school. And um, by doing that, we can kind of predict a safe operating life for the windows if you get a certain size scratch or cracking in the glass. Um, so that's kind of the majority of what I do or what I um, focus on, I guess. And I'm so I'm finishing up some reports on damage tolerance for those windows and, you know, safe operating limits kind of thing. Um, and then also, um, I'm actually only going to be at NASA for another like six months or so because I'm actually going back to school. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be um, going to the National Test Pilot School. I received a fellowship to become a flight test engineer out there. Um, so I'm going through the professional development or the professional course, which is where you're like flying yeah. more and like learning how to do flight test. And then I'm also getting a master's degree as well in flight test engineering. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That'll be great. Yeah. Well, I think that was my my list of questions. Did you have anything else you wanted to talk about or did we kind of cover? Um, I think we covered a lot of it. Um, I just like to always shoot out a piece of advice. So yeah. um, especially I know me growing up, I thought that in order to succeed in engineering, I had to be the smartest kid in the class or the smartest person in the room. So I always like to remind people that um, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room to be successful. You just have to be passionate about what you're doing and and have a good heart, like work hard and have a good work ethic because um, 
people value hard work um, and passion over, you know, natural. I mean, it's good to be naturally smart, but I think that um, those other qualities are a lot more impressive to a person and um, really make them see you as a good employee or a, um, good at what you do. So, yeah, no, I, I talk a lot about the passion like you've talked about because uh, I try to showcase that there's so many different jobs. A lot of kids think it's just astronaut or designing rockets. <laughs> you know, no NASA's hiring you know, nutritionists and doctors and technicians mm-hmm. and chemists and anybody can uh, be getting a job there, but, but they do look for that, you know, passion that you're really excited or interested in, you know, what you're working on. And then that kind of, you know, carries through to, uh, you know, this person's really excited to be working here, working on this or wanting <laughs> to do it. And that whatever you're interested in, if you just, you know, keep following that, that's going to take you places. So. Exactly. Yep. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much. I know you are, yeah. are busy and I appreciate you rescheduling this and making the time. And, uh, and again, I'll uh, post all of Kate's uh, social media information. Anybody wants to follow along with, uh, with her journey with uh, now going back to grad school. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. We wish you luck and, and thank you so much, Kate, for taking the time. Oh, thank you so much. It was good to talk to you. Excellent. All right. Bye.